Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to continue working on this web page that we're making. So in the last video, we created this web page. It's got a form with uh, several, several sections of radio buttons, a selection menu. Um, I've got a div here that actually has a background image, so that's not an image displayed on the page. That's a background image of a div. And I've got a table where some prices are going to go over on my editor. So I've got the page set up. We've got some styles controlling some of the visual elements and layout of the page. Uh, I've got a section for where the JavaScript is going to go, but I haven't done any JavaScript yet. Uh, down here I've got a form. Okay, The form is going to do an auden submit alert. It's going to display an alert and return false. So basically here I am breaking the submit of the form. But in each individual form element there's an on change event handler. So basically I want to update the total of the product, you know, including the options, every time somebody changes something. So I have this on change event handler scattered throughout my form and all of the inputs and in the select menu itself. So what I want to start working on now is this update total function which I have yet to create. So I'm going to move up over here to my script area and let me go and give myself plenty of room to work anyway. So I'm inside of the script section of my page. And this could be an external file, but I'm going to do it internally so everything is all kind of nice and self-contained here on this one file. And this file will be avail available for you. You can go and check it out. There will be a link down in the description of the video. So I'm going to start off by creating my function. And let's see, my function, in fact, I'll just start here. My function is going to be called update total. And I'll press my enter key and then move my arrow down. So I'm only going to have one script and it's going to be this function. And just so you can see, so there's the top of it. I'm starting the function. This is where the function is going to end. Oops. Let's get the right key there. And I'll just do a comment. End of my main update total function. So there's a comment. Just to remind me that that's going to be the end. So this is my complete function. Now I'm going to start off by declaring a few variables. I'm going to have a variable called base price. And this variable is going to be equivalent to $500. 500. I'm going to have a variable called options price. And this variable is going to be equivalent to zero. Okay, So I'm not starting off with any options. They could just get the base price stick figure. Okay, I'm also going to have a variable called shipping price. And I'm going to set that to zero also. Although you might argue that you know by default we'll do the standard shipping so maybe it should default to whatever the standard shipping price is. I'm going to start it off with zero anyway. So I'm declaring a few variables right at the beginning. Now I'm still in my function. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a function that's just going to check for the kind of shirt option that the customer has chosen. And just keep in mind our ultimate goal here is to allow the customer to choose one or no different, you know, a, a type of shirt for their stick figure, a set of pants for their stick figure, and then a kind of shipping that they're going to choose. So they basically have three different things that they can choose some variation of. So I'm going to create a function and it's going to be called check shirt. So and this function, just like any other function, is going to have a starting point and a stopping point. End of checking for shirt. So within my update total function, there's another function called check shirt. And basically what I'm going to do in order to check for shirt, to see what kind of shirt, is I need to see what radio that button they've selected. So I'm going to do a series of if statements. I'll do one and then I'll just uh, copy and paste it because they're very, very similar. Now, in order to do a proper if statement here, though, I do need to know that all of my shirts have a unique ID. So basically, each radio button has a unique ID. Shirt 0, shirt 1, shirt 2, shirt 3, and so on. So I'm going to reference my radio buttons by that ID. So I'm going to create an if statement. If the set of parentheses is going to contain my logical test. Um, so if document get element by ID, opening parentheses, single quote, shirt zero, say I've already forgotten what I've called mine, dot checked. Okay, so let me just do a quick check and I'll scroll down. Shirt zero, that's what I've called it. I didn't know if I pluralized it or anything like that. So I want to find out if the radio button was checked 
Which radio button? The one that has the element ID shirt zero in my document. And this is either going to be a true or a false return. If it's true, then whatever is in between the curly braces is what's going to occur. So if that is true, if shirt zero is the true one, well, then document get element by ID. And now I need to reference some image, which I haven't created yet. Source equals set of quotes. And my options price is going to be a plus equals zero. Let me do a closing curly braces. Okay. So basically what's going to happen here, if somebody chooses the shirt radio button that is no shirt, they don't want to remember. So one of my choices is there's no shirt. That means it'll deselect anything and they won't be charged for that particular option. So if they choose that, then the image is going to be set to nothing. You know what the better thing would probably be to have a shim image, a transparent GIF image, but I didn't make one for this one. So that's probably the better way to go to actually have an image, which is a you know a one by one GIF image, one by one pixel, and you know just put in something like shim.gif. Since I don't have one of those, I'm just going to keep that blank. But I want to change the source of an image, which I don't have yet. So I need to go ahead and create those images. So one of my images is going to be for is going to be my sh for my shirt. Another image is going to be for the pants. So let me go ahead and scroll down to my HTML. And these are where my images are going to go. Let me just go ahead and create those. Image source, yeah, I'll leave that blank for now. No alternate text. ID equals um, image shirt. There we go. And let me just, oops, wrong button. Let me just repeat that because I'm also going to have image pants. There we go. So I'm going to have a place for my shirt images and a place for my pants images, basically. All right, so now that I've got that, back up my script, I know I can plug in here, image shirt, OK? So the ID that I used on this image, ID image shirt, is what I'm referencing right up here, OK? So IMG shirt. And that's what's going to happen there. So let me go ahead and save that. And really, I just want to repeat this a number of times. So I can copy this and then paste, paste, and paste. OK, so now I've got four of them. Let me zoom out for a quick second so that you can see that I've got four a little bit better. So I've got shirt 0, shirt 1, shirt 2, shirt 3. Now the source image, I've actually got the images already created. And I've got shirt1.jpg, shirt2.jpg, shirt3.jpg. So I've got these different shirts depending on their checked or unchecked status. So if shirt0 is checked, there's no image. If shirt1 is checked, I'm going to display shirt1. If shirt2 is checked, I'm going to display shirt2, and so on. But I also need to update their prices, OK? My shirt1 is going to be 100 bucks. My shirt2 is going to be $150. And my shirt3 is going to be $180. So I'm going to save that. So I've got my update total function. Now I've got a function for checking the shirt. Now I'm going to jump down here. And actually, I'm done checking the shirt. And before my function ends, I need to trigger this shirt check function. Really easy to do, though. All I have to do is type in the name of the function, check shirt. There we go. So I'm creating that particular function. Now the other thing I want to do, in addition to displaying my check shirt function is I want to display the price of my option so far. So here's what I'm going to do. In addition to calling that function, I'm going to create another variable. Okay, So this is down here, by the way. This is at the end of my update total function. Let me scroll up a little bit. Let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to go and create a variable called total price. And my total price is going to be equal to my base price plus my options price plus 
my shipping price. Okay, now these are variables. Variables, base price, options price, and shipping price are variables. And I created those variables near the top of this function. There they are. Base price, options price, shipping price. One was set to 500, another couple were set to zero. Well, if somebody chooses a shirt option, my options price is going to be appended, okay, changed. So instead of zero, it might be 100. So now I'm going to take that shirt's price, there it is, or the options price, add it along to the others, and I'm going to make a total price variable. And now I want to display these in strategic places. Document dot get element by ID. And let's see, I'm going to have an options price area, and that's going to be inner HTML equal to a dollar sign space quotes. So basically I've got a dollar sign space in quotes plus my options price. Let me zoom out so that whole line will fit in there. Okay, so I'm going to take a dollar sign in my total option, my options price, and I'm going to insert it into the HTML of a particular element. Well, which element am I going to do that to? The element with ID options price, and I've got one. I made it in that last video. So I've got a table here, and one of my table cells is options price. There it is right there. It's the ID of a table cell. Okay. So back up to the script. So there's the line. I'm going to press Control D. I'm in Notepad++, and that'll repeat a line. I also want to put in shipping price and total price. Now my shipping price, of course, is going to be the variable of my shipping price, and my total price is going to be the variable of my total price. Excellent. So got that taken care of. Let's see if anything is working. I'm going to jump back over to my browser, hit refresh, okay, choose shirt one. Shirt one shows up and there are my my options for $100 shows up. Base price 500, 100, there we go. Shirt two, shirt three. Looks like I'm having a little issue with my shirt three changing. Check this out. So no shirt works, no shirt, zero price. Shirt one, I'm getting my shirt there, it's 100 bucks. Shirt two, green shirt, $150. Shirt three, the price is changing to 180, but my image isn't changing, so something must be up with the image for shirt three. So let me go check that out. Okay, oh, I just screwed up a little bit on my image reference here. Shirt3.jpg, save, refresh, Shirt two, shirt three is red, 180 bucks, shirt two. There we go. So that takes care of the top part. In the next video, oh, let me just jump back over here. In the next video, we'll go ahead and finish this up. So we'll start to create the area for the pants and the shipping, and then we'll be all done.